I'm Mark Schirmerhorn, Chief of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. I have the pleasure of working with a group of outstanding clinicians, all of whom are dedicated to providing the best and most appropriate treatment for our patients at the Cardiovascular Institute. We are also a leader in research and have been involved in many trials that demonstrated the clinical effectiveness of new endovascular therapies. In particular, new procedures directed at endovascular aortic aneurysm repair. These less invasive techniques have led to a reduction in deaths from abdominal aortic aneurysms and a reduction in ruptured aneurysms in a large nationwide analysis of patients. We routinely perform endovascular repair without incisions. It's a procedure that we helped pioneer. We are proud to say that we have one of the world's largest practices and highest success rates with this technique. We have an exceptionally skilled team here at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Our decisions are informed by the latest research. It is the cornerstone of our efforts to deliver unmatched care and the best possible outcome for you and your loved ones. The aorta, where aneurysms most commonly occur, is in the abdomen, uh, just below the renal arteries, the kidney arteries. The aorta divides to the iliac arteries and the pelvis, which then go down into the legs. Uh, the abdominal aorta is far and away the most common place for aortic aneurysms. The normal size of an aorta is up to about two centimeters, which is right around an inch, and we typically repair them when they get up to about five centimeters. An aneurysm is a, a ballooning, a dilation of the artery that as it gets larger, it becomes weaker and it can burst. And if it bursts, the chances are very high uh, that it will be fatal, bleeding. Uh, and so what we like to do is find them when they're smaller. Aortic aneurysms occur in about 5% of men over the age of 60 and about 1% of women. And a lot of that's dependent on whether or not you smoked, uh, but not completely and also whether anyone in your family has ever had an aneurysm. I went in for a routine uh, visit with my neurologist in Boston and he, uh, uh, he asked me kind of on the side, do you, do you, uh, anything else bother you? And I said, yeah, I have a stomach problem. And the stomach problem, he said, oh, well, we'll take care of that right away. And he, he uh, immediately gave me the name of a, a doctor in the system who uh, would uh, do a CAT scan pretty quickly. Well, I did the CAT scan in a couple of weeks, and the doctor called up and says, nothing wrong with your stomach, but you do have this AAA, the triple A. I said, what's that? <laughs> and he explained, he said, you better get in pretty soon. And he signed me up right away with uh, Dr. Schumacher. Typically, your referring physician will have sent us some of your records already, and they'll have either sent us your images or you'll bring them with you. That may be a CAT scan or an ultrasound. So those will all be there when we see you in the office. Dr. Sherman Juan um, did uh, explain that uh, there, there wasn't any immediate rush of, uh, about this, but it needed to be taken care of. One of the most important things that we do is to reassure people who have small aneurysms that at uh, small sizes, three, four centimeters, their risk of rupture is essentially zero. Check the zucchini again. And then we can watch them until they grow to a size where all of a sudden that risk of rupture is high enough that it's worth it to fix it. Um, and that tends to be somewhere in the five centimeter range, five and a half centimeters, and it's variable depending on the age and overall health of a patient, whether they should have it simply followed um, or should they have surgery to fix it. To fix an aneurysm, there are uh, two different methods. There is open surgery, which involves an incision on the abdomen, the other option is a minimally invasive technique called endovascular repair. The most important thing is having good anatomy. You need to have a, a good amount of aorta underneath the arteries that go to the kidneys where the, one of these devices can attach. Um, that's the primary thing. And then the other is the arteries between the groin and the aorta you have to be big enough to allow our devices to pass. After you see the surgeon and the rest of our staff in the office, we'll discuss what procedure you need and we'll set that up with our administrative assistants who will look at the surgeon's calendar, your calendar, and come up with a time that works for everybody to do your procedure. 
before your scheduled surgery, you'll have an appointment in the pre-admission testing area. That's where you'll see a representative from the anesthesia team who will talk to you about how you're going to be sedated for the case. They'll also do a full history and physical and send you for tests like an x-ray, an EKG, lab work, those type of things. If you have a history of a heart condition or we think that you are high risk for having a heart condition, we may ask you to see a cardiologist before your surgery as well. When you come to the pre-admission testing area, we'll give you all the information about what time you need to show up, when's the last time that you can eat, what medications you should take the morning of your surgery. You can also call our office anytime if you have questions about those things. You will be greeted by multiple people. Uh, a nurse will be assigned to you and will help you prep for your surgery, which will include getting undressed, possibly doing some more lab work, starting an IV, those kind of things. You'll also see the anesthesiologist that morning before your surgery, as well as somebody from our surgical team. Your family can accompany you to the pre-op area. They may need to wait in the waiting room for a short period of time while we get some uh, medical things set up. Then they can be with you for a short period of time. And when it's time for you to go back to the OR, they can go to the family waiting room or they can go get a coffee, go take a walk, and uh, they can have a pager or a cell phone that we can reach them to give them an update when you're finished. Most patients go to sleep. Um, for these procedures. Uh, certainly all the patients who have open surgery go to sleep and the majority of those who have the endovascular technique go to sleep. Occasionally if people uh, have a desire to be awake or if they have uh, uh, severe cardiac disease we'll do the procedure with them awake. The minimally invasive procedure is done through two small punctures in the groin so it's quite simple uh, to numb up those areas so that they feel nothing. Um, uh, but most people go to sleep and we then uh, make our punctures in the groin. We put our sheets in which allow us to introduce our devices over wires. We put a catheter in near the kidney arteries and inject some dye and take x-rays to show us the anatomy of exactly where the kidney arteries are and then down below where the branch arteries going to the legs where they uh, originate. And then we deliver our pre-measured devices into position and deploy them so that they expand and attach to the good artery in relation to those kidneys exactly where we want. And then when we're done, we pull everything out over the wire and then we tie our little sutures that go down onto the artery to repair the puncture in the artery. Um, and then after that, we place a Band-Aid over the uh, puncture site and the patient is uh, awakened and taken to the recovery room and then to the floor. After the procedure is done, you'll go to our PACU, which is your post-anesthesia care unit. That's a place where you'll have a nurse monitoring you one-on-one. -on -one. You'll have some uh, telemetry, blood pressure monitoring, that type of stuff. Once you're stable uh, in that unit, you'll be transferred to our vascular intensive care unit, which is a step-down unit on the fifth floor in the far building here. And you will be assigned a nurse who will monitor you for the remainder of that day. I uh, see the patients obviously throughout surgery and then I'll usually check on people in the recovery room. You may still be a little groggy at that point and then uh, again the following morning and we make rounds as part of a very large team. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you. You all ready? And my team are there intermittently throughout the day and then as needed they're in touch with me uh, to have me come back and see if there are any other issues that need to be addressed. And we make rounds routinely uh, every morning uh, as our entire team. Uh, but most patients go home uh, that following morning after surgery. After we send you home, we'll give you specific instructions related to your procedure and what to monitor for. Uh, typically, you cannot drive, uh, operate heavy machinery, or lift anything heavy for about a week after this operation. Uh, after that, you can go back to most of your normal activities, and we'll see you back in the office in approximately a month with some follow-up studies. The uh, stent grafts uh, are quite durable in people who have good anatomy. There is a small chance that uh, people may need to have uh, subsequent uh, procedures done, uh, such as an extension cuff or an angioplasty. The chance of that's in the 1 to 2 percent per year range, and that's why we monitor them over time with either ultrasound or CAT scans to make sure that everything is sitting in exactly the right place uh, and that nothing else needs to be done. Understand that it is major surgery, that uh, you're not going to get up and play golf the, the next couple of weeks. See, the cucumbers are looking good. Yep. I can uh, pretty much do what I want to do, and I'm just careful about heavy lifting and, and doing silly things uh, 
you know, I wouldn't move that piano or anything like that, or do anything very strenuous. I'm, 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 almost, what, I'm almost 70 years old, so you got to take things in, pers in perspective, if you will. <laughs>